Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, you know, we've had the privilege of um, hearing from you for uh, a couple of nights now, and I thought tonight we can maybe use the opportunity to to, to continue some of the, the the themes and topics that have come up, um, especially as it relates to, especially as they relate to this film that we've just seen, uh, which is not your latest film, but uh, your latest film to be released in the U.S. Uh, so yesterday, um, you you had some interesting things to say about how you direct actors. Um, I was curious to hear you talk tonight about how you go about casting, um, because at the center of this film is, I, I think, an incredible performance uh, by the actress Lee Ha Young. Um, and she's also somebody who is new to your work. You were working with her for the first time. So I'm curious about the process of casting her and the process of casting more generally, because you've described your how you work um, in, in previous discussions. And you know most directors have a part that they've written, and they look for somebody who fits the role. You go into production without a script. So how do you cast when you don't have a script? How do you how do you look for actors? I I think first thing is I uh, make up my mind about uh, kind of a period or the specific date where I will start working on the next film. So uh, can be one month before or. A, Two months before, okay, I, I will start shooting something on uh, September 5th, something like that. Sometimes I have to change, but usually I uh, succeed following the plan. That's the only thing I, I know for sure. And then around the time, maybe one month before, I start looking uh, start thinking about the actors that I can work with because uh, I have a, I need two things uh, places and uh, main actors to start thinking about film um, uh, so I, instead of uh, having an idea or a script and then fi trying to find the cast uh, actors for the roles. I, I'm opposite. I, uh, I need uh, actors and places first, and then go from there. So, like, a, like a one thousand ideas are possible, but once you have a uh, one actor, main actor decided. It's very intuitive thing. I don't, I don't have any. Um, <laughs> why I cast this actor? I just uh, cast him or her. Then, then one thousand idea like uh, can be uh, can become like uh, five ideas, and then I, I make a combination with all the another main actors, and then the final idea arises. Ideas are not really, uh, it's not even outline, it's just so, uh, for example, this film, when I met her, uh, she was quite thin, uh, uh, almost looking like uh, she just came out of a hospital. <laughs> uh, I didn't expect that. Because, uh, <laughs> And I think that's uh, one of the uh, uh, big reason that I thought about uh, my sister, who is now who passed away. And uh, there are other things in my life that uh, are reminded by this uh, meeting. At that day, I I thought about maybe she has an illness. Uh, and she comes back from United States. That that was the of course the starting point. Mm -hmm. I'm curious about how um, you know new actors enter your work. Um, you often work with 
the same actors over multiple films. Maybe not every film. Sometimes they you know go away and then come back. And this ensemble, um, you know, I think everybody, almost everybody we see in the film, we've seen in another one of your films. So this, in the case of Li Ha Young, um, can you tell us a bit more about her and how you how you decided to work with her? Because she's somebody who had. Um, has had a long career. She had sort of was a star in the 80s or so, and she also comes from a film family. Her father is a, a, a quite well-known uh, filmmaker of the 60s and 70s, uh, Lee Man Hee. His her father was a, a very very well known, and uh, even though he made the genre films. Uh, he was very diverse, and uh, his way of working uh, convinced many people around him that he was a kind of genius. Um, <laughs> but I haven't seen any of his films. Wait, you haven't seen any? Uh, but, okay. <laughs> uh, actually, one, one. I saw one film produced by my father and mother. Uh, my parents were film producer, and they produced one film by him. This is the one from the sixties, like. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. They, anyway, I, I don't, I don't uh, remember meeting him, but uh, I know he frequented uh, our house when I was very young. And one day, maybe I was twenty something, and just freshman. The, uh, I found this uh, 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 kind of a winter jacket, and then I, I heard that this is this belongs to uh, uh, her father. He left it there because he was drunk, I guess. And, uh, <laughs> nobody knows why that was there. And then, but I liked it because I usually like the worn out clothes, the used ones instead of new ones, and. Especially those days, it was very pure <laughs> uh, taste for, of mine. And anyway, I liked the clothes and I kept wearing it and my mother didn't like it because it was too worn out and uh, I don't know, she threw away, but I went back, I went to the, uh, this trash can and uh, retrieved it. <laughs> anyway, I have this memory. And then this uh, Ye Young is known for uh, her, how can I say, it? The, the, it's charisma is the right word, I don't know. Uh, not only her ability as an actress, but as a personality. You know, there are a few actors who her, their personality is more important. Uh, I think mm -hmm. it's, uh, she was... Consider like, yeah. and then one day, or oh, I have this date that I was going to shoot, and then this Lee Young just came up the name, maybe because uh, she was there in my mother's funeral. I, I I didn't expect her to be there, and she was there because her friends who were friends of my mother. So they brought her to the, my mother's funeral. So we had uh, maybe two minutes, five minutes of uh, um, chat. And so and that stayed in my mind. So when I was uh, going to shoot something, I needed someone. And this name of Ye Young came up. And mm -hmm. I called her, and she, she was very hospitable. She said she wanted to work with me in earnest. So. We, we, we uh, made a disappointment, and then that's what I felt when I first saw her. She was very thin, and then that day, this idea of a, a woman came back from United States with illness, fatal illness. Um, I've heard you say that when you cast actors, you you don't really know their work as actors necessarily. You're more interested in them as people is is that the case? So sometimes you have no no sense of their screen persona or presence. No, I don't think that's what I see when I no. see them. 
or especially first time I not trying just I see that like that you know I see him or her as a person she might have a great career but I really don't care <laughs> oh so I you know like yourself you you meet someone and you have this impression right I just respect that more mm -hmm. um, and then try to while we are talking Oh, it can be two hours. Uh, I, while we are talking, this uh, one track, if I can call it, this uh, very ambiguous, uh, strange being is in front of me. But because uh, of what I am, who I am that time, at the moment, I sense a certain uh, streak or track from this being. And then I uh, hold on to it and then uh, kind of kind of wait for a certain story or setting comes up because mm -hmm. of this uh, holding on to track of her from her all kinds of track you know can be shown and felt by me like shown to me and then you know what I mean <laughs> and then so that's what I said you know, yeah. when I met the uh, Ye Young I felt um, it's always interesting to me when we see actors, you know, re recur in your films, um, especially when they, they seem to be playing the same characters. Um, the two women uh, that they meet, who recognize, one of them who recognizes uh, her as an actress, um, the, uh, I think that the, played by Seo Yeon Hwa, who is uh, in many of your films, um, and she's with this companion um, who's played by Lee Yoon-mi, who's also, and they, they, ha they seem to be playing the same characters from the film we saw last night, mm -hmm. The Woman Who Ran. And then there's also, Seo Yeon Hwa is also in Grass, and I think she's talking about a house, mm -hmm. which seems to be the house that her character has in The Woman Who Ran. So I, I'm curious about this idea of characters just wandering from one film mm -hmm. to another, like act actors wandering from one film to another, playing the same roles from one film to another. And I think you've done this before and with other. Oh, so as far as I'm concerned, I, that isn't very, oh, it is not clear my intention. Okay. Oh, but I, I of course, oh, thought about it and, um, Maybe people make a connection because they appear in different film with the same kind of character or things like that. But it, it wasn't that important for me. Mm -hmm. So they're not necessarily the same person. Yeah, mm -hmm. can be and have it some difference. Yeah. But uh, I think the for a certain audience, I think it wouldn't be so. Uh, I think in this case, maybe because of the film screening back-to-back -back nights, it's more uh, <laughs> more, more conspicuous. And even with that, the connection making is okay. Yeah. Uh, why, why not? Yeah. So that brings me to an interesting I idea in terms of how you work, because um, a repetition is something that you, you work with within a film and also from film to film. So I guess you for you, this seems like a ridiculous question to ask you, but like, Repeating us, you you you're not concerned with repeating yourself, right? In in. I think even though I try to repeat something, I cannot repeat exactly. Yeah. And then, in a sense, we are repeating everything. Yeah. So why worry? As long as I feel something fresh. So yeah. On what I'm doing. It's okay. So you wouldn't go back to check a film to see what you did, uh, what you do? One day, one of my assistants came to me very uh, discreetly, and uh, this sentence came up in a uh, uh, different film, and then on, I mean, at the moment I didn't... But did you change it, or do you say it's no, fine? No, I it's fine. <laughs> because, uh, as I said, even though I tried to make something totally new, mm -hmm. it's impossible. Even though I try to make exactly the same thing, it's impossible. Yeah. Important thing is different thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's uh, yeah. yeah. I don't care. <laughs> um, the other repetition I notice is that they go to a bar called Novel, 
which is also the name of a bar in the day he arrives. Is it the same place or not? It's the same place at Queen Street. <laughs> Oh, you mean in this? In this film, they oh. go to a bar called. It's the same owner, <laughs> sa uh, s same, same bar, but mm. uh, she moved to this new place. Ah, that's why it looked different. Uh. <laughs> but uh, 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 it's totally irrelevant. But uh, that place was her first uh, bar with that name. Okay. And for some reason, she moved to different bar. And then one of the bar place was the where I shot this the day he arrived. Yeah. And strangely, he f she found this place empty again. She moved <laughs> to this bar. So maybe that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm going to ask a couple more and then just open it up. You know, the other thing I was hoping you could maybe, you know, just expand on a bit. Um, it's interesting you say that you came up with a story when you saw, um, you know, Lee Hye Young as a, a, a being very thin, and, and it sparked ideas for you about illness. Um, the other important, I guess, theme in the film is uh, something that you touched on in in previous discussions here, which is belief uh, and this question of faith. And sh it's interesting that this is, you know, recurring um, monologue in the film where she's expressing gratitude, you know, repeating some kind of mantra. Um, there's sort of prayers, but they're, you know, I, it's, it's unclear what God or what belief system she's, um, you know, is, applies here. So I'm wondering if you want to talk about the, how belief enters the, the film for you, given what you've talked about in the last couple of nights. Oh. I think it's a uh, subject might take long, long time. <laughs> so um, I will just say that uh, this uh, her attitude and her remarks, her uh, monologue came to me like all the other things in the film. I could just yeah. I respect uh, what I call what is given instead of what I. Uh, search and found. So I try to be open, and something always comes up, and then I I just respect that. Uh, so I I call it what it, the process of what is being given is accepted by me, and then that that the, her remark monologue and prayer. Came up with the same process. That's one thing, and then of course it reflects something going on inside me. And uh, I'm, I'm very being. I'm, I like to be careful about saying this very, 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 very personal thing. Uh, so just uh, I stop. <laughs> um, I. I wanted to ask about the ending of the film um, and her reaction to the voicemail, um, which is to laugh. But it's a, it's an incredible laugh, <laughs> also um, because not just because of how long it goes on for, but also of how much it seems to contain. Uh, and I'm wondering how you worked uh, with her in that scene and what kind of direction you know you gave her, or if you just allowed her to interpret it as she wanted to. Mm. I, same with the, all the other actors and the, all the other scenes. I just try to, I kind of pray that I have a right dialogues for the actors for the day. And if, it's, if, if it fits them, then I don't need to tell them anything almost. Only when they interpret uh, in the wrong way, obviously, then after the or so, then I tell them maybe you should change it to this interpretation because it's possible always to read the uh, sentence in a different way. 
But otherwise, I try my comments or direction really minimum level. Each take they they interpret and respond to the sentences. I I given them in a little different way. Uh, working in ensemble with other actors, so it's really uh, really interesting to see what they do every take, and I choose among all these takes. So for the scene you or action she uh, uh, acting she did or. Uh, it was a combination of what I wrote down and what I what she has been building up inside her during the shooting and her personality okay. and something else guiding us. <laughs> yeah. Um you were talk you have talked um I think last night about just you know just being very responsive to the conditions of you know around you when you're shooting um and i think uh you know that sort of sets the mood of the film um you know, and and uh weather is important in your films and i think the rain in this film is is very important and i'm just wondering if you can talk a little bit about how you work with the elements you know, I like, think I didn't really think too much, but I I really like weather change. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I bought this big book written by some English writer about the weather change. You know, I was happy to found find that kind of book. Anyway, this um, weather is so amazing, changing this weather. It's I think it's the the for me, the biggest symbol of uh, what is being given to me, you know, is whether I cannot ask for it. Just in the morning, it's there, and I have to live through it. So it's always it's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. it's, oh, today is like this. Today is like that. So, so one of the important elements, and, and also as a as a Philemically speaking, you know, it gives you different light, different mood to me and the actors, and and it affects us. And then I follow that direction in a way. <laughs> so it's very important. Do you always work with the weather you're given, or do you wait for changes? Um, or, because some people, I mean, some directors will like wait for you know light mm -hmm. or things that they want to happen, or or bring in a rain machine or something. I can, I cannot be hundred percent sure, but uh, about ninety nine percent, I never waited for the uh, specific weather. Mm -hmm. yeah. I always, like, well, for example, in this film, the raining scene, it oh just I. Right, I uh, heard that the, the day I'm going to shoot is going to be rain. So I uh, just followed it. Oh, I I can give you example better example. So when oh, my actress Kim Min is there, and we first met with the feeling called right now wrong then, and then I. The last day of shooting, I wrote down in the morning that there uh, was a certain direction of ending. And then we were all ra lazy that we didn't know that it was going to have a, we, we were going to have a snow that day. And we, while we were shooting the first scene of the day, and the, the snow started fall, fall. So, but it was very uh, light snow. But I thanked it and then I shot it through it. And then we had lunch time. It was like uh, 30 minutes, quite short. I came out first, and then it was like uh, this thickness of uh, snow. For about 30 minutes, the snow fell so much. The whole world is different. So I changed the ending. Instead of the male character going away, I changed the female character going away, and then changed the, the other things too. So this uh, is, uh, I think, a good example, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh. And the rain in this film, the alley, 
when they're walking. I just liked it when I heard that it's going to be rain. Yeah, so you know, I, I just liked the idea. Mm -hmm. Rain is falling outside this bar. So I wrote something in yeah. the morning. Um, all right, we have uh, time for a few audience questions, and I believe we have microphones as well. So if you raise your hand, uh, we will get a microphone to you. Um, we have a couple of hands in the front, uh, if we can. What would you give advice for like aspiring um, film directors? Like, what was like? I know this question is given to you a lot, but it would actually mean a lot to me. <laughs> Ad advice to the aspiring directors? Mm -hmm. I think I, I would, if I'm meeting someone in a very comfortable setting and he, he is an aspiring director, maybe I will say something. But uh, all these aspiring directors, I don't know whether I. <laughs> I think uh, uh, it's not advice, but uh, I think of becoming or being a, a director or any kind of uh, serious artist, you don't need a, a push. They are already doing it. So just. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, thanks a lot for this amazing movie. I guess you discussed this before, I don't know, maybe not an evening, but in terms of production, I was wondering, I guess this movie kind of qualifies as a low budget movie in the US, or that's basically part of the first question. Assuming that, I guess you have a very small team and have certain core roles. And so my question is, what kind of roles do you keep, need for the core team? How big is the core team? How long do you shoot? What roles do you do yourself? Maybe I stop. <laughs> mm. Oh, nowadays, uh, so including myself, it's three, four, three, four. Uh, I I shoot and I write, I direct, and I edit, I mix, I compose, and the uh, Kimini, my uh, she's my uh, production manager. And she acts, she does the still photography. And she advised me in many other things. Like we talk about the uh, costume, things like that, all that. And there is one production person. She, she comes to our office three times a week. And uh, this new person, happy, happy, happy coincidence, she, she originally did this uh, boom, boom thing. So now I think we don't need a another extra person. <laughs> so maybe next film will be done by three crews. Um, yeah, I think over there. Um, can you hear me all right? Yeah, a really, really wonderful film as usual. Um, I just wanted to ask, what do you think is the relationship between reality and film? If that question makes any sense. Uh, relationship between what and what? Reality and film. Uh, reality and film. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to ask that. No, oh, it's not just... Oh, I don't, for me, the reality is just name. We we all share the uh, definition of a uh, concept of reality, whatever. Uh, but the reality, I don't think anybody really knows what it is. It's just so uh, we be, we have this uh, dictionary term of reality. So. We use it for background for many uh, arguments and belief, things like that. But um, I, I, I thought about this and I told them, I told other audiences. Uh, but uh, 
For example, it's a stupid example, but uh, if I have one ice cream and then I taste it, and he tastes the same ice cream, and he said, I say yellow, oh yes, it's yellow, and how yellow it is, and we can talk about 100 years, 100 years about this taste, I cannot be sure we are talking about the same thing. So, we just stop in the middle and uh, pretend we share something, right? So, so I don't worry too much about reality. <laughs> uh, I think what about film was the other part of the question. <laughs> the, the question is about... Um, <laughs> so I don't think in terms of a relationship between uh, reality and feeling. I just do uh, making feelings. I don't know why. I can come up with some reasons, but I know they are just uh, made up reasons. Has uh, some connection with my being, but cannot represent at all what, what, it, it, what it is going on. So I just do what I do as long as I feel um, I want to do. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> and that's what I think about reality. Okay, we'll take one final question. Uh, yeah, let's come, come down here. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I noticed that in your films, and including this film, a lot of things start starts at a uh, at a shot of the food. So, what um, uh, what food means to you and your films, and why uh, are they like so important in your films, especially uh, sake, uh, like the wine and uh, sometimes, cor especially Korean food. Thank you. I, I'm not sure I, I can say 100%, but I think uh, largely true, because I try to use the element that is close to me in everyday setting, and they I hope they become a somehow uh, organic whole as a film. So instead of uh, have a, for example, team or uh, outline narrative, outline and then fill up with other details, I try to not use, but uh, something from my life, very small thing, eating or walking and opening the door, meeting uh, someone. I get all those things in different levels just come to me and they mix together and become one. And one other thing is uh, eating, I guess. So I don't put the meaning or want you to have a clear interpretation of, of seeing this uh, eating scene in my feeling. Because I'm eating every day, it's important, and why not use it? People eat too. <laughs> but um, anybody can make anything with, uh, with it. Uh, you can make a uh, meaning out of it. You can just look at it and go through it. You can find the, uh, um, you can, by looking at this person's uh, how she eats, you can get some impression from that and then use it as a part of character uh, characteristics. 
All right, we have to wrap it up, but we have one more opportunity to um, hear from Director Hong tomorrow at five o'clock. Uh, it's here, uh, it's a free talk, so you know, uh, come get your tickets for that. Uh, and we have more films in the retrospective. Uh, thank you all for coming, and Director Hong, thank you again. Oh, today I, I had to wear the mask, sorry. Uh, I just had uh, this uh, tooth extraction. extraction. Oh. That's why I had to wear this. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>